And most people don't really want to dig deeper, especially if what they're reading is something they like. Even though you know it's false, you're more likely to share and repeat it. The history of lying. This week, we'll be discussing lies and technology. Also, I have some good news. Margot's awake. If one of those seminar students gets in trouble now, it'll only be for arson. <laughs> On the other hand, how much faster do you think this would have been solved with cuff technology? I was tested with it, along with the Liars Club, by the way. I passed with flying colors. But honestly, what does it mean for us as a society if we have technology that can do the work of lie detection for us? I mean, especially since so much lying is done through technology. People have been working on lie detectors for centuries, right? And most of these are lie detectors only in name. Even polygraphs only monitor changes in a person's body's responses to tough questions. Though you wouldn't know that from television or movies where, you know, lie detectors are regularly dependent upon during criminal investigations. <laughs> So what will happen if there's an infallible lie detector? Will we put all our faith in technology to save society? I don't want to discourage anyone from buying cuff technology, obviously, but before we talk about it, let us consider where most lying takes place nowadays. Yes, the internet, where it's difficult to put a cuff on someone if you think they're lying. Now, not only that, it's also a place where you might not ever see the person you're talking to. How are you supposed to pick up on micro expressions or, or nervous tics if you don't even have the face most of the time? Definitely makes detecting lies a bit of a challenge. So, how do you allow yourself to trust people on the internet? And at what point does your trust make you a perfect hit for a catfisher? Now, I know what you're going to say, I'm smart. I'm not gullible. I know when somebody's lying to me. Well, perhaps. Perhaps not. It has nothing to do with, with being smart or gullible. It has more to do with reading comprehension. Let me tell you a story. There's a Key and Peele sketch in which two men are texting each other. One of them is extremely high strung. The other is incredibly laid back. When they receive each other's messages, their moods determine the tone they give to the words that they are reading. So, a friendly invitation, you wanna go, let's go, becomes, in the other's eyes, a challenge. You wanna go, let's go! See, how many of you have had arguments like that with your roommates or your friends if one of you has had a bad day? Or what about when somebody doesn't respond to your messages? You might start imagining that they're angry with you, right? Or that they're ghosting you. Well, the problem with online communication is that it's supposed to be a conversation, but it can never truly be a conversation. What's worse though, it's that it's an inescapable non-conversation. So now you have a medium where you can read into whatever is being said to you or not said, and you're constantly bombarded by messages. Of course it's easier to lie online. People want to believe people. And that goes for online profiles as well. If you say you went to Harvard on your dating app profile, and I read that, what am I going to do? Call up the Harvard Registrar's office and check your graduation dates? I think not. Now, of course, the lack of fact checking gets even worse when we accept dubious sources as truth tellers, meaning when we take everything at face value. So, it's not just about not using Wikipedia. It's more about thinking to yourself, hmm, is bbc.net really affiliated with the bbc.com? Of course, the lack of fact checking gets even worse when we accept dubious sources as truth tellers, when we take things on as face value. So, is the news site you're currently on truly a reliable news site? Or is it someone masquerading as a reliable news source? 
Again, most people don't really want to dig deeper, especially if what they're reading is something they like. And that's actually a huge problem. If you like a factoid, even though you know it's false, you're more likely to share and repeat it. Kind of like that whole factoid about swallowing eight spiders a year when we sleep. It's actually exactly like that. Take the theory of the alpha wolf, for example, or commonly known as the alpha male. Rudolf Schenkel realized after his study was published that everything was wrong. Completely wrong, and he actually printed a retraction. But by that point, nobody cared. Because people like the idea of an alpha male. Another problem is that if it becomes so normal for people to lie online, then it might become easier for people to do it too. Not just because everybody does it, although that's not very helpful, but actually because your brain physically changes when you lie. The more you lie, the less the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that controls emotions, responds, resulting in less of a fight or flight response. Meaning it just becomes easier and easier to lie. You get desensitized to it, basically. On the other hand, you are more likely to have health problems. It might be the amount of stress you experience when you lie, but people who lie were shown in one side to have more health complaints. The issue is that we have no idea of knowing or controlling how people are going to respond to COVID. It is a wonderful piece of technology that should make the world a better place. But on the other hand, it might expose people to the lies in their family and the ugly side of the people that they so love and that nobody wants to see. Would you take that power if you had it? Or would you leave well enough alone? Well, I guess we'll see when Cuff goes live. Speaking of technology, for your second to last piece of homework, I have a special project for you. Write a short paragraph in Google Classroom about what steps you can take to protect yourself from lying online. Also, make sure to uh, consider how lying may evolve with technology. You'll get a gift in return. I'll be watching very closely.